If you want to be any good at Go, you need to be familiar with the two-space base. It is a fundamental Go position. A base is something that has potential for making eyes, although a base is not invulnerable. This here is a two-space base. This over here is not a two-space base. A two-space base is on the third line, not on fourth line. There is a drastic difference between this. The variations change. A two-space base has a few key points. Attacking key points, let's put that as X, here, 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 and here. This space can be attacked. Sort of indirect attack and or sort of worry zones is these points here. This one space jump away from each side. So a base can't really be attacked unless it has the, both these points covered. White has these living moves, square has these here. So these are common moves here to start trying to live. A common way to get a two space base is like this. This is how you get a two space base. And we have this position here, black kind of tries to attack, and then you make your two space base. Two space base is something you play in your opponent's territory. This is a pretty solid position, but keep in mind that it's not immortal. Black can do some nasty things to this base. So let's talk about some situations. So this is a theoretical position. White has this group in the middle here. It has no chance of expanding. So if these moves weren't there, black would try to do some aggressive move. White, of course, just jumps over here, gets even more space for themselves. And that is kind of the folly with attacking a base that isn't already pincered in some way. Now, the nasty things that black can do involve attacking these two points, A and B. But if white already has a bunch of stones or friends in this outside area, this is not just not a good idea. This is the kind of thing you do. He really wants to attack this group all over the board. So black attacks this group, forces the group out, and then makes points on the left or right side. Well, in this position, probably the right side. Anyway, let's show you the variation. Now this can be done from either side, but let's take it from the B position first. Black pokes out the eyes. Now you think maybe that obvious move would be to try to block on this side. So let's look at what happens if we do this. White tries to kill this stone. The next move is this jump here, reaching to connect to this stone over here, and basically it works. Uh, if white is super aggressive and tries to keep control of this area and Hanes, black doesn't connect because that would lead to complications. So what black does is start pushing out here. So the only way that white could theoretically keep control of this area is to Hane on top. But of course, there are weaknesses here that black can take advantage of. The most simple variation is just to Atari this side here. White saves that stone, and this stone is already dead. Black does not need to play this next move here, because if black plays away, white just doesn't have the liberties here to do anything. Black just takes these two stones, white connects, and then connects, but this is still the same. White has no base here. But for simplicity's sake, let's just talk about this stone. White, of course, gets some free things. Atari, black responds, and then the next move for white is to play something over here, try to get out. See, if this stone was already here in this position, this is fine for white, because then white gets another move, plays something larger, and actually starts attacking something. Now, what if white tries to go the other way and to just keep his stones connected, and if white blocks on top, black has two options. A and B. B is the complicated variation. This is B is the I change my mind variation. Let's just show you that really quickly. Wedge, white Ataris, black extends, white connects, and black can't save the stone because of liberty problems, but black can try and gain something instead. Black cuts, white Ataris again, black Ataris, white takes, and black connects. And see, this is the change your mind variation because black has given up trying to kill this group to gain a huge wall on this side. Black's next move in this area would be to claim some of this sweet, sweet territory. But the killing variation, which is I'm sure most people are more interested in, is A here. If white tries to block on this side, black just extends and is connected. This is the same thing as earlier because this white stone is dead. Black even has more liberties in this. And white has a weakness here. And if white blocks on this side, black just extends out. White has no eyes here and has to run to try and live. Black has a nice game of attacking this for the rest of the game. What if Black doesn't have a move here, but still wants to gain some stones in this area? This is a Joseki variation that you should know, and it's kind of one of the weak points of the two space base. It's not completely surrounded, so can't get killed, but Black can still gain something from attacking this. The two moves, like I showed you in the beginning, are these two key points here. So let's show the variation. Black pokes, white blocks, saying I'm gonna live here. White saying, no, no, this is, the... you've left the weakness here, and white is in between. Black has to Atari, and, and does so. And the next move here is just extending. Look at this nice wall that black has built, and in return, white is pretty solid on this side. But white is not completely alive, so what white does next is Atari this stone. Black extends, solidifying his influence over this area. White has to extend to be solidly alive. White can omit this move, they're feeling very dangerous, but we better have a plan to make another eye somewhere else. So, as I've shown here, that the two-space space is extremely valuable and is hard to kill, but it has its weaknesses that you have to be aware of when you're using it. Alright, thanks for watching.